I think this should sound a bit better now. There we go. I got my mic going. Thank you, Wayward Notions. Uh, yeah, to answer your question, Team Money, I do hope that they have uh, more people making Heroescape related content. Uh, it's always uh, good to get those people going up. I don't have my face camera today, so I'm sorry about that. I'm trying a new setup. I'm looking to get three cameras going is the ultimate goal, but uh, yeah, more people making videos. Uh, I'm definitely going to be contributing to that, making a lot more painting stuff for uh, Renegade Scape, and um, I've been working on some videos. My hard drive crashed today, which really put me uh, put me out. Uh, <laughs> I lost about uh, 14 terabytes of uh, footage and scripts and uh, and pretty much everything I've been working on for a while. So uh, hoping I can recover it. If not, I will. Uh, starting over and <laughs> repainting a lot of things because i had about uh four or five painting tutorials kind of in the backlog i was working on um but th that was the backup my other computer recently died so i just backed up into this but this one died so i didn't have a time to move it to my backup backup so uh <laughs> we'll uh we'll figure that one out but uh that was a tragic loss today so i thought you know what let's Let's get over that. Let's get some painting going. Uh, I've probably noticed, but I got Morgoloth, 3D print of him. I'll be painting today. Yeah, I'll definitely uh, look into it. It's more the the cost and the how everything else goes. But if it's if it's reasonable, I'll definitely uh, I'll try to see what I can get because I do a lot of graphic design for for other companies and businesses and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, yeah. I lost all the assets, so I'm hoping uh, I'll, I'll be able to, uh, to figure out this one out. Um, but thank you for, for that. I'll definitely look, in, look into that more. Uh, my wife's also out of town, and she lost a family member, so I've been watching the kids. So everything's kind of all over the place today. That's why I paint. You know, everything's kind of uh, a bit hectic and a bit, uh, but not the way you would like it to be. I paint. It calms me down. It kind of keeps me focused. Yeah, it does suck, though. That is for sure. <laughs> uh, I'll figure it out. It's happened to me a couple times before. Um, that's what I get for having everything on an external hard drive. That's on That's on me. But uh, <laughs> not doing it. You know, if you have a problem, always handle it uh, directly. Um, that's my free advice for today. <laughs> uh, but I hope you're all doing better than I am. I'm still doing great today, regardless of that. Uh, we got some fun things in the lineup. We got some pirates, as you've probably seen me kind of awkwardly fidget with as I get situated. Uh, some renegade pirates. We'll be painting these to look like the buccaneers of New Tortuga. Maybe not by today. Uh, got some little pirate boys. You gotta get them out before it becomes a spooky season. Because you can't be scared of pirates. Unless you're Rick from Rick and Morty, I guess. But that's a deep cut there. And so these will be fun. Kind of a different modeling style. And then we got more Galoth. Who's just been on my back roster for a while. I want to get him done. I probably won't be painting him how he actually looks. Just because I don't have a good picture of him online. I've been able to find. So I'll just paint him my own style. He'll be the uh, a rogue original. And uh, yeah, I got some big plans. Or well, I had some big plans for uh, Halloween. Uh, a lot of video content releasing. I've been uh, animating a like a Stranger Things in intro for my channel. And with that that uh hopefully i think is safe on my desktop itself so we should be good there uh, but i'm happy with how that turned out uh working on a, a tier not a tier list well i do have a tier list video with uh, actually wayward notions uh that i will be doing next thursday finishing the uh the aesthetics uh for my uh just how the characters look and so i can't do two things at the same time so i'm uh, <laughs> I'll explain what I'm doing here. And um, I'm currently scripting a theory video for Thorman's role in the Age of Annihilation. I'm currently reading the Prose Eda, uh, as well as Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. Uh, both great works. Um, and I've got some ideas on his role and how it relates to Norse Mythology. So if you're a Scape fan, you want that deep dive lore, stay tuned for that. Uh, we got some fun things coming up. 
And then uh, NGC, the customs group I'm associated with, is also uh, releasing uh, releasing their new wave, spooky uh, SCP uh, street side skirmish uh, wave. It's coming out, so check out their uh, their site for those some fun units I uh, helped paint and design, and. Uh, get started so right now i'm taking morgoth and uh i am dry brushing him to just kind of close the details this is what's called slap tap or it might be smash top is the official name for it now but essentially i spray painted it black and And spray painted black and nice solid tote. And then I'm taking a white, pure white paint on my dry palette and just highlighting the raised edges. These 3D prints don't have a lot of detail, so I like to just kind of know where they're at so I don't overpaint anything. And it helps me with, uh, saves me some time and the layering and all that kind of stuff as well. I really like Halloween. Uh, that's kind of my my time. But it, like it's like Comic Con light is how I uh, how I look at it. I wanted to avoid that right here. I was distracted while I was talking and just put it right on. I did a big blob, but I can uh, thankfully paint over that. I haven't done this in a while. I'm a bit out of practice in the uh, talking and painting, so forgive me why I get uh, <laughs> readjusted back into that process. Um, so if I lose my train of thought, you can certainly remind me what if <laughs> what I was talking about. I already, already have trouble uh, maintaining focus as is. People keep on saying I might have uh, some kind of a uh, focus deficit. <laughs> I'm starting to believe them. I'm just finding all these secret little details that were hidden in that solid coat. So look at this. We're already kind of bringing some things out here. I hear my kids waking up. This might be a shorter stream than I wanted it to be if uh, they uh, barge in and the house is on fire. So uh, we'll see how much we can get done today. This is a great method for a figure with lots of little details. You just kind of don't know where they are. You know, also, if you plan on doing uh, speed paints, recommend doing this as well, as this will make your speed paints look even better. I don't know if I'll be doing speed paints today. I kind of, I, I was into them. I recommend for people that like to use it, but honestly, at this point, like just layering up from, from a base layer takes about the same amount of time. I've kind of got this down to a bit of a science. But if you're starting off, you just want to get some figures painted. Speed paints are definitely a great thing to kind of dive into. Uh, they work really good in cloth. That's what I use them a lot for because layering cloth sometimes is just a pain. All right, it's looking pretty good there. Look at that guy. He's a dashing devil, so to speak. I'm using uh, Pro Acryl. Uh, bold titanium white for this dry brush here. Which, if I was to recommend you get get one good paint is a good white, a good, well I guess two paints, a good white and a good black. Everything else you can kind of go any brand you like, but Pro Acryl's got really great colors on those. I mean they're just great in general, they're my favorite paint brand right now for lots of different reasons. They got a, a twist cap right here. So their, uh, their paint stays dry. It's got a built-in shaker bottle. And their paint qualities are top tier. So uh, definitely recommend starting to get those slowly. I was kind of phasing myself out of uh, what I used to use as Army Painter. Which, they're good. Army Painter's strongest strength is they have a lot of color. They have a whole range of colors. And their color primers match up directly. So what I do is I just, uh, you know, I'm 
people ask how am I able to paint figures so fast and get so much done in kind of a short amount of time is I just find a lot of colored primers basically with the layer which saves me a lot of time just kind of doing doing this and and uh now we were notion to get to you in a second uh oh I lost my train of thought now <laughs> but um oh yeah the base coat of the so I just base coat like a goblin green with their spray paint and then I just add the details uh yeah any Norse mythology facts in my research because uh in your immediate week so you're speaking Norse there <laughs> um let's see here well I'm really been deep diving into Ragnarok but uh, just the story of it is fascinating because I posit that in Hero Escape, Age of Annihilation is in the days before uh, Ragnarok. But then I kind of, uh, you know, you know how I am. I don't just research one thing. I want, if I posit a theory, I want to know, be, speak certainty. So uh, I have a board of mad rambling uh, and deep lore, but, but. Pretty much the stories of Thor and Loki are just like a Bugs Bunny and Daffy. Kind of, uh, everyone, like from the Looney Tunes show, every one of them is just kind of, uh, it usually ends with someone in drag and an awkward situation. Lower this down a bit here. But I've been, uh, I actually got the audiobook for Neil Gaiman's, uh, Norse mythology, which maybe I'll let you borrow. She's Wayward Notions, my sister, so I can do that. Um, am I using the dark red or the bright red here? Yeah, I think I'm using burnt red and pro grill here. Nice, bold red. But it's uh, very well narrated, very well told. But Ragnarok is my focus here. Because the game of Heroescape takes place in the world of Valhalla, which, you know, you, you've probably heard of Valhalla through pop culture and stuff like that. Uh, but the purpose of Valhalla is very interesting. It's, it's pretty much the soldiers are there just to have a good time and fight, but they're really sent there to aid in the final battles of Ragnarok. You know, uh, they are... They are pretty much being put on reserve until Ragnarok ha happens. And then they are all called upon to, to do their battle. I think Thorman, uh, he's the character who writes a lot of the lore and the journals and kind of the, the Heroescape meta narrative, is going to be take the role of Fenrir, uh, the great wolf. He's kind of a, someone who is originally allied with Dandar, the good guy. And, uh, but recent trailer from from well the original trailer from Avalon's Hill Hero Escape Thorman was a lot more disgruntled I think he says the words you can uh oh what does he say I have to write it I have it written down somewhere but pretty much he says these generals let the my home get turned to ash and now it's time for action you can either be apathetic or you can be a a fighter you can't be both something like that it's pretty cool. Um, and so I think he's going to become more, much more of a a greater threat compared to like Ekar in the fight. Um, where he's going to bring about the end of Valhalla and the Heroescape story. Is my is my theories. Oh yeah, I just listened to that one. That's the, uh, yeah, I, I don't remember names, but yeah, he's there. He's just, he's just got some, uh, He's oozing. He be oozing. There's a lot of goats. A lot of goats. A lot of wolves. Huh. Let's see here. So I got this big red cape. I'm going to look for a good skin tone for this guy. I think I'm going to do like a bluish white. That's probably what I'm going to do. So let's let this guy sit for a bit. I'm always too impatient to start the next step, but... All right. What do I want to grab here? 
I gotta Yeah, I'll I'll definitely be talking to you later. I got a big book I got from the library. I'll if you, if you like to look through. Uh bye Wayward. You uh you take care. Thanks for stopping in. Alright, let's see here. Let's actually do want to try to make these pirates look like they look like in their Elias. Let's see how they look. Buccaneers of Tatuga. Let's go with y'all here. Alright, so they have elements of red and brown. So I'll use this red I already have out. These are proxies, so I can, of course, do whatever I want with them. I'm going to try to make them look as close as possible here. going here i got some wood grain from vallejo get some basic brown i also suggest getting just a bunch of browns on hand i'm using vallejo now they have a really good selection of browns and where is my golden child here aha i got dark golden brown from pro Trail. Gives you a good range of browns to work with. So let's see here. So I think this guy. This is a squad, so we're going to try to do them all as a. Yeah, so I'm going to add his red element right here on his waistband. Rest assured, I will be breaking out the uh, Halloween, the recreations, and uh, the music once October hits. I really like it. I might even run some D&D games. I have some people who have been wanting to do some, some of that online. Maybe I'll actually stream something besides me uh, flapping my gums and painting, too. Who knows? I'm going to be uh, getting a new job pretty soon. So My current job involves me sitting in front of a computer and... Uh, talking to people on a headset all day so sometimes it's not entirely enjoyable to do that right after work because uh, it feels like work but i'll be uh moving from like uh customer service to pest control which will be fun all right let's see here so we're just getting our base layers done uh Probably should have done the highlight because he's got a lot of small details. I'm having a hard time picking out here. Let's get some black on the palette too. What palettes are great? Uh, just keep the paint fresh, keep them, uh, keep them loose, and keep them moist. Say that word. Um, I live in Kansas, and and the humidity here is so atrocious. My paints will evaporate as soon as I put them. Get them some nice black here. Yeah, next one I'll probably have to just buff up the white on it. Wait, 
I am having a hard time figuring out. These kind of seem to be more from the Null Zeros line of, of figure modeling, where you gotta be really careful with how you, uh, you have to keep your paints loose. There's not, there's a lot of small detail. Honestly, these are probably better for speed paint, not gonna lie. One thing at a time here. I have to change brushes though. And now I'm just gonna find any of the bits of metal that will show through and add in a black undercoat to it. You don't have to do this. You could just paint metal onto it. I find that it gives it a richer a richer tone. Alright, let's get a Here. Ava Spitey. I like pirate. I do not like pirate. Oh, there goes my camera. Wah. <laughs> Sorry for those watching. Uh, the camera just fell off the tripod. On it before it fell off. I don't think I cut this piece. Uh, but it's been a bit. Everything's just falling apart here. Back in business. This is the troubles of doing things live. Sometimes you just have Okay, let's get back to it. I think we are good here. Pardon the intrusion. Base coat down. I'm kind of figuring this out as we go on. This is kind of my test model. Just kind of getting a feel of the figure. I might do a little bit of brown, a little bit of black. The hat. Uh, look here. Paint's all about discovering. You know, you could follow a guide or you just kind of do things as you feel it and Fix your mistakes along the way. Why is that so straight? Black. Let's keep it a black. Let's keep this black gray going. Keep it consistent for a dark contrast. Nice thing. All your colors still show through. All these ridges will be empty. This one's gonna really come alive with the dry brushing because there's so many small little details. Probably where I should have dry brushed first. So when I do my live stream, you get kind of more of the, <laughs> you get less of the polished 
thing I do for my edited videos, which uh, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, you should check that out. Because I can. No one's going to stop me. Not even myself. Um, and I try to cut, you know, this uh, experimentation down a bit. I've been really, really happy and really blessed with that channel so far. It's, uh, I mean, it's growing slow. I've been working and bolstering it and getting some more stuff out there. But we're at 70, we just hit 75 subscribers, which is, uh, I didn't even think I would get that many. So it's, I know it's not a lot, but I'm, I'm extremely humbled and grateful for everyone that's, uh, expressed interest in what I'm doing. So thank you all for that. Oh, that does remind me. National Heroescape Day is coming up. Uh, I'll be making a video about this pretty soon, but, uh, I got some prizes. I got some giveaways. Let's see, what, what am I planning on giving away? Um, I made a 16 by 18 custom poster, which will be shown in the video. And it has a, uh, you can find an image of all the heroes, classic heroescape figures to a group photo. So that will be sent out. That's the big prize. And also I'll be giving away some paint. Maybe I'll give away these pirates if someone wants them. <laughs> I'll, I'll get the uh, list going, but there'll be a lot of NGC stuff. Uh, there will be some custom paints, mainly mainly paints, not the official Heroescape stuff too much, just because uh, this stuff's kind of expensive and I don't have a lot of spares per se. I have like one of everything, but not much more beyond that. But I'll try to paint them up just as good as if they were we're actually, uh, I'm not feeling this. I'm just trying to, I don't know if I didn't chose the wrong colors, but I'll have to work on it. It'll get there. Yeah, I should have dry brushed this because I just can't tell where things end and begin. They use the solid gray brush. You live and learn. That's why you get a lot of this figure. So far. We got the staff running across. So we're gonna do a different shade of brown for that. Let's get this lighter shade of brown in there. Let's get a thinner brush. We're working with some smell details. I've got the uh, the detail brush from Army Painter right here. Yeah, but I'm pretty deep in this uh, <laughs> this Norse mythology stuff here. Uh, I'll say that Thor is the yeah, Thor movies are very wrong in their uh, characterization of the character. Uh, he's said to have reddish hair. First off, I mean he's like a Viking. Thing I just need to look at a picture of a pirate. Forget what pirates look like. I was painting a koala the other day. I was like, something's not right. I can't remember what a koala looks like. I'm, like, I'm forgetting what pirates look like. What parts of their cloth are the same, or what parts have like different colorations or different cloth. And so we have this usual. That's the usual. 
good, good. Get the pirates going. I could make it uh probably invert part of this. Probably should have done this the other way. And had uh the tote rag captain now. Morgan. But let's see here. So the the puffs, the puffy legs are part of the same material, so we'll just put the up there. Ooh, I could add stripes around where it's a nice little small model. And we gotta get that cleat. Alright, I think I'm back on track the black erase the brown now let's get the skin tone just so i can kind of tell where that's at getting the live uh the live mental process here so <laughs> let's enjoy that so i'm using some hand flesh Logger. Aha. If you use Army Painter, you gotta have like a uh, thumbtack or a, a paper clip nearby so you can declog the nozzle. Because they do get clogged, and I'm really bad at putting my lids back on. The character claw for sure. Uh, Army Painter, you want to shake excessively. Like when you ex think you've shook it enough, shake some more. Not bad paints, they just require a bit more work. So, a little bit less. Do not squeeze. If it's not coming out on your army painter, paint it out. But don't just keep squeezing, hoping it'll come out, because the lid will burst through the sheer nature of pressure, and you will lose about half a jar of paint, and it will get everywhere. And from experience, that is not a fun thing. Thin layer of paint right here, just so I can kind of map this out. Right now, I'm kind of just seeing how I like these colors playing with each other. Once I get to my fourth pirate, I'll kind of know what I'm doing, but I haven't really decided on the theme or where the colors go just yet. I'm gonna keep your face tones thin, but not too thin. Otherwise, they'll just become watery. That's too watery right there. That should be able to hold itself together when you test it. I'm testing my hands just to kind of see how it flows. Gives you a bit of a warning shot beforehand. I don't really get the nose. I always miss the edge of the nose in the original model. Nice, thin, even layer. So I'm filling the gap in the hand. And just go around, make sure you get all that skin. I see people who make like, uh, mix their own skin tones. That's certainly an option as well. The most important thing is don't start with your brightest color. You lose all control if you do that. You want to get a dark skin tone, whether you mix it yourself, or you have it remixed. Um, definitely don't rush on the face. Take your time, settle in, and then just add layers. This guy's got a sword in his hands, add some black for that, silver in a second, and he's got these armbands, let's might get some difference, we add that red element back to it, just to kind of keep it consistent. Nice contrast. I 
There you go. I like that a lot more. That's what we're missing. Too much brown. Now, never hurts to take half a moment. And just kind of look over all your models. Make sure you get all the spots. And also just even the line. I'm going to do the cream colored last uh, because it will blend with everything and create a mess. This is done as well, so it's not that good to see. Morgala, the door. All right. I think I'm just going to go. I don't want. I'm going to do like a grayish. Let's, let's do something funky here. So I'm going to get some bright, warm gray. I'm just kind of freestyling today. And we'll be a fun color. Let's get some of this uh, jade mixed in. I love this color. It's such a unique color. Yeah, speed paints are great. Speed paints, uh, uh, speed paints are a really good investment if you're just starting off or if you don't got a lot of time. Uh, they do great things. The important thing is you want to just make sure you prime, prime white with speed paints right here. I got this guy. Let me do. Let me deviate for a second here. All right, so I got this uh, elf I just have primed here from Rune Wars. And you want to take your speed paint. I got some camo cloak. Shake it up really good. I recommend not putting it up onto your uh, wet palette. Go into a separate dry palette like so. And you don't want to thin it down. You And just one coat. Your paints are great. They work really good in cloth. They work really good on faces. Faces with a lot of details and intentions. So we'll and if you do it right, that good brush control. You do some really cool things with Big thing with speed paints is that if you get into a spot where you don't want to go, well then you have to wait for it to dry and then layer back up the white. But speed paints are really good. I'm really impressed with the quality of them, and they do their job really good. There's no, there's no like shame in using speed paints. I, uh, they're just another tool in your toolkit. Some things might be harder to do with speed paints, like Zed's blimp in its current state. Uh, might be a bit hard but it's gonna be hard with brush and stuff like that it's honestly more of an airbrush kind of thing because it's more of a vehicle but it can still work and just go through find the areas you want that color and one coat done you want to keep it smooth no uh things and it does get lighter as it dries keep that in mind but look at that right there that's that took me uh 20 minutes to lay it up right there like that all right let's just because i have trouble focusing let's just uh deviate some more <laughs> and let's just show how great speed paints are i can find them I haven't tried the speed paints 2.0, but I heard those are pretty good as well. You can mix speed paints. Uh, you can blend them. Speed paints are really good for, I uh, use them for light and fires a lot. If you add like a white dot to the middle of something, you can get some really cool The 
helps to know where you're going for speed paint because it's a bit hard to kind of course correct once you've committed. But should get going. We typically want to wait for them all to dry so the colors don't blend, but this is more just a quick short overall. I like speed paints more than a lot, a lot more than Citadel's contrast paints for sure. Although their skin contrast is a bit better than their armor paint. Brown speed paint. Speed paints do reactivate too. Uh, so you want to make sure that if you plan on layering over them, uh, that they're fully dry. It more broad concepts with speed paint. Don't worry about the little details, just pick one or two colors and kind of go with it. Speed paints work really good with the Ordo. I imagine they'll look really good on those guys. You can layer speed paints. If you want something a bit darker or a bit lighter, you can add, go through and add some more. There's a lot of little fun things you can do. I'll have to make a video about that someday. I know a lot of people will probably be using that for escape once it comes out. Find if I can find my brown. So I heard the new speed paints have uh, they have metallics, which I'm interested to see how those look. Aha, there you are, you rascal. I'm almost out. And let's get some orange hair. Oh no, I am uh <laughs> I am uh I that's what this is why I do it. I like to interact with people and uh you know if they have questions or just want to see how something works or looks. That's why I do this. Um I just like painting, so I don't really care what I'm painting. These are all just stuff that were in my uh, my bin to get done. All right, so let's add some nice orange to this hair. Make sure my brush is fully cleaned out. Using fire giant orange here now. Pretty much it goes in the crevices and makes the uh, lighter areas uh, shine through. This is a very quick job. I'm just kind of showing you how fast you get something done. Uh, if you wanted to really do that, let's see where's my brown at. Because I mean, speed, speed paints are a really good conversation to talk about. Like what's a, what's a speed paint? Why? 
to use them, when not to use them. Nice brown in there. Rune Wars models are really great for uh, sea saints. They're probably the best proponents for them I've seen. Just because they got these nice crevices, nice little details you can really bring out. I really like Rune Wars models. If anyone's looking for good proxies uh, for escape figures, uh, they got some great figures. The game's out of play, but uh, you can buy like a pack of like 15 of these guys on Amazon for like 12 bucks. So. Definitely something to look into. Great practice models uh, if you're just getting started off, too. Go ahead and use them in the right colors here. That's green. Want no green, though. All right. I always say that literally anything is better on the field than just gray, boring plastic. Like, even if you just dry brush the edges and add some shade to it, it will still look better than doing nothing. All right. That right here. I mean, this isn't going to win you any contest in the end, but if you just want to have something not boring on the field, And now I'll leave the face of white I had missed over the first time. Big thing with speed paints, you can't let any white remain. good to kind of know some brush control techniques and know how the speed paint actually works. Good thing to practice. There we go. We are about done for at least for an example. I still would recommend using metallics instead of speed paint, speed paint just because you get better coverage with it. But let's see here. It's entirely speed paint. Let's put some gray floor gray on that. And.
there we go we have a very quickly done speed paint job as a as an example not not hard and looks halfway decent better than unpainted for sure yeah right. some nice basing on that and let this sit and dry for a bit get your figure all painted I always say if I can paint anyone can paint there's not it's just all about knowing how to do it knowing the tips and tools of the trade and speed paint is a good tip and a good tool to use there you go I'm not dissatisfied with that compare that to I painted some other figures of the same kind of model oh, what's the clip of that? Uh, well I painted another figure that looks pretty close to this and it took me about I mean it has a lot more layering and highlights and with that but it took me about an hour and a half for each figure uh, <laughs> uh, so you know you take your poison if you if you just want to get plan you speak because no one's going to say hey that doesn't look right better than this better than just playing with this boring thing no details no uh form no structure not even play this is a miniatures based game miniatures is the best part all right well thanks for that little derailment i did not mind at all this is a fun little i feel like i actually got something done today because i feel like i'm just kind of puttering over here trying to figure out what I'm doing. <laughs> so it was nice to feel like I actually know what I'm doing for a second. All right. I think I was saying Jade is going to be, I'm going to actually be doing maybe a highlight, like just airbrushing this whole thing kind of into a spot where I want it to be. That sounds kind of fun. I think very circularly. I don't think in a kind of a straight line too often. So little derailments are always welcome. Let's see how it goes. Ooh, I'm liking that. I don't want it to be skeletal. I think this is actually going to be more close to how the actual thing kind of looks. I think I need a better dry brush, though. Probably oh, shouldn't be dry brushing on the wet palette. That's not me, but I think I should be. I have here a three printed uh, dry palette. Which I use to remove the excess paint from dry brushing. I'm just kind of, I'm figuring this out as we go along, so we'll see how this works. brush gets all old and frayed keep it they make really good dry brushes at that point I like this, how this contrasts with the red. I'm excited about it.
have here put some black on dodgy areas. Get this really thin down black for the horns. I don't want these white highlights. Sure beats uh spending however many hundreds of dollars it would take to get this thing here. I have a metal version from uh Temple of the West that I've been needing to paint, but I hate assembling. I lost one of its arms, so I haven't really been bothered to look for it. <laughs> I feel like I unfortunately might have to leave soon. I hear my kids uh, have woken up. And the water's running, which is making me rapidly nervous as the uh, as the tie continuing. Uh, so I have to call the stream short a bit today. This isn't the most efficient way to paint this figure, but I am, as I mentioned, just you know, having fun, you know, talking, kind of putting paint on. I have a lot of figures I keep on hand just to test, just to try new things out. Because the worst thing you can do is get in a rut and just keep on doing the same thing you always do. Never try anything new. Never grow. What is that? This one's looking kind of Get wash on something though before I leave. Alright, let's get that light gray I was talking about early earlier. And you know what? I want to be fancy. Let's edge highlight here. I already got the highlight. Let's get a thinner brush. Got my Kalinsky master brush here. Great for edge hiding. And on the edge highlight, just use the edge of the brush. Maybe a little bit of this gray, so it's not so bright. But yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go through. Let's outline pretty much the figure. Do a little bit of damage. My kids grabbed my brush the other day and uh, we're just going 
with them, so some of my brushes have suffered some casualties. Pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, those are good ones. Keep your brushes uh, non frayed, folks. Such like deep detailed ridges, it's almost like a crime not to accentuate these more. I'm going to also be washing this too, so I'm going to be a bit darker. My music. Glazed. I'm just gonna bring these down. We're gonna do ultimate. Right, just do a bit less. Hey, Elijah, what are you all doing up there, bud? Do I need to go up there? Uh, you're in the bathroom? Yeah, let me, uh, all right, folks, my kids are up. Uh, I just grew concerned because I hear water running. So I'm going to call it for a day, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Stay tuned for some updates, uh, <sighs> updates regarding my channel, and uh, happy spooky month. Coming.